This is the Favorsky rearrangement. Rolling. Okay, so for the Favorsky rearrangement, we start with this alpha halo ketone shown right here, and then we insert it into a basic solution, and then when we do that, it results in a ring shrinkage and a formation of this carboxylic acid derivative. But if instead of the H, we have an R group, instead of this H, we'll have another R group, and that results in an ester product. So here we start with a alpha halo ketone in the presence of um, alkoxide base. So here's our alkoxide base, and it attacks one of these hydrogens because they're more acidic um, in pKa values than this one. So what happens is these electrons move there. Let's go. To make that. And this has a resonance structure of this. So I'm just going to um, number our carbons so we can keep track of what's going on here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this um, lone pair here on the cyclohexane um, on carbon six comes and attacks carbon two which is uh, already partially positive because it's attached to the uh, electronegative chlorine. So these electrons here come off and go to the chlorine, which kind of floats away, Cl minus. And then uh, we're left with a, uh, a uh, two ring structure here. And, um, there's only one H here, and one H here. And this is our original one, carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six. So from this point, the alkoxide base will attack carbon one, causing the double bonded oxygen to split and cause a negative charge. Nice. Yeah, step three. Smile. Step three. Step three. <laughs> So this three carbon ring here breaks when the electrons from the negatively charged oxygen reform the double bond. Um, there's another shift here making a carbo anion product um, in a five membered ring. So that's here. Um, and this carbon six is actually the head carbon here. And carbon one is gonna be part of this ester attachment. So, and the negative charge is on carbon two. So the final step is the, the water from earlier that deprotonated our original cyclohexane ring comes in and protonates our cyclopentane ring, giving our final product. So another cool thing about the Faborsky rearrangement is that it works with linear molecules as well as cyclic ones. So here um, we see the familiar alpha position hydrogens. And in an alkoxide um, basic environment, one of these will be snagged, creating the familiar um, 
carboanion structure. And then a rearrangement happens here, um, getting rid of the three carbon ring structure, making um, the familiar ester product in a linear fashion rather than in a ring. Multiple Favorsky rearrangements can cause an interesting molecule to form called cubane. Cubane is highly dense and highly energetic, meaning that a lot of energy is stored in a small place. Researchers <laughs> have also been looking into the properties of cubane for nanotechnology and medical purposes.